July 19th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Psalms chapter 73 and 74 from the Old Testament Certainly God is good to Israel and to those whose motives are pure. But as for me, my feet almost slipped. My feet almost slid out from under me. For I envied those who are proud, and I observed the prosperity of the wicked. For they suffer no pain, their bodies are strong and well fed. They are immune to the trouble common to men. They do not suffer as other men do. Arrogance is their necklace and violence their clothing. Their prosperity causes them to do wrong. Their thoughts are sinful. They mock and say evil things. They proudly threaten violence. They speak as if they rule in heaven and lay claim to the earth. Therefore, they have more than enough food to eat and even suck up the water of the sea. They say, how does God know what we do? Is the sovereign one aware of what goes on? Take a good look. This is what the wicked are like. Those who always have it so easy and get richer and richer. I concluded, surely in vain I have kept my motives pure and maintained a pure lifestyle. I suffer all day long and am punished every morning. If I had publicized these thoughts, I would have betrayed your loyal followers. When I tried to make sense of this, it was troubling to me. Then I entered the precincts of God's temple and understood the destiny of the wicked. Surely you put them in slippery places. You bring them down to ruin. How desolate they become in a mere moment. Terrifying judgments make their demise complete. They are like a dream after one wakes up. O oh Lord, when you awake, you will despise them. Yes, my spirit was bitter and my insides felt sharp pain. I was ignorant and lacked insight. I was as senseless as an animal before you. But I am continually with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me by your wise advice and then you will lead me to a position of honor. Whom do I have in heaven but you? I desire no one but you on earth. My flesh and my heart may grow weak, but God always protects my heart and gives me stability. Yes, look, those far from you die. You destroy everyone who is unfaithful to you. But as for me, God's presence is all I need. I have made the sovereign Lord my shelter as I declare all the things you have done. Why, O oh God, have you permanently rejected us? Why does your anger burn against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your people whom you acquired in ancient times, whom you rescued so they could be your very own nation, as well as Mount Zion where you dwell. Hurry and look at the permanent ruins and all the damage the enemy has done to the temple. Your enemies roar in the middle of your sanctuary. They set up their battle flags. They invade like lumberjacks, swinging their axes in a thick forest. And now they are tearing down all its engravings with axes and crowbars. They set your sanctuary on fire. They desecrate your dwelling place by knocking it to the ground. They say to themselves, we will oppress all of them. They burn down all the places where people worship God in the land. We do not see any signs of God's presence. There are no longer any prophets, but we have no one to tell us how long this will last. How long, O oh God, will the adversary hurl insults? Will the enemy blaspheme your name forever? Why do you remain inactive? Intervene and destroy him. But God has been my king from ancient times, performing acts of deliverance on the earth. You destroyed the sea by your strength. You shattered the heads of the sea monster in the water. You crushed the heads of the Leviathan. You fed him to the people who live along the coast. You broke open the spring and the stream. You dried up perpetually flowing rivers. You established the cycle of day and night. You put the moon and sun in place. You set up all the boundaries of the earth. You created the cycle of summer and winter. Remember how the enemy hurls insults, O Lord, and how a foolish nation blasphemes your name. Do not hand the life of your dove over to a wild animal. Do not continue to disregard the lives of your oppressed people. Remember your covenant promises. For the dark regions of the earth are full of places where violence rules. Do not let the afflicted be turned back in shame. Let the oppressed and poor praise your name. Rise up, O God, defend your honor. 
Remember how fools insult you all day long. Do not disregard what your enemies say or the unceasing shouts of those who defy you. God, so often it's hard to, it's hard to see past our current circumstances. Especially here right now in the United States, we see all these people in Hollywood or on TV becoming rich seeming to have not a care in the world with fancy cars and houses and designer outfits and designer marriages. We see the same thing portrayed uh, in politics as well as in our sports arenas. Many people, not only here in the United States but across the world, seem to effortlessly deal with this life. And as the psalmist is talking about, it seems like while he is, is trying to remain pure to you, God, and, and obey your laws, all these other people aren't, and yet they're being rewarded for it, and they're getting away from it, and they're, they're like fat calves, <laughs> and they have everything they could possibly want. And then you lead him into the temple where he remembers his place in your heart. That the things of the world aren't what we're called to be or have or desire. That all of our treasures are stocked up for us in heaven. That the end of their lives will truly be the end of their lives. As they go on to eternal hell. And the end of our lives here on earth will be the beginning of our eternal life. Getting to be in your glory God. We also have to remember that the things we go through here on earth are also for your glory and the continuation of your kingdom, telling others about you and reflecting your perfect love. As your children here on earth, we go through our trials and tribulations in a completely different way than those who do not have you in their lives. I get to tackle problems head on with this amazing peace in my heart and the knowledge that you are truly right there beside me holding my right hand giving me the power and strength to deal with whatever it is that's coming and the entire time I'm doing this I am keeping my eyes on you on my internal reward of getting to spend that time with you glorifying you God I just pray today that for everyone listening that when the things, the material things of this world sidetrack us, gain our attention and cause us jealousy. And, and sometimes they're not even things. Sometimes maybe they're relationships or promotions at a job, uh, certain titles given out, whatever it is that we seem to want to long for in this world. Please help remind us that our eyes should not be on the things of this world, but only on your kingdom. Not on our kingdom and what we want to build here on earth, but on your eternal kingdom, God. We don't deserve all that you have given us now and in the future. But we are truly humbled by your forgiveness, your grace and your mercy, and most of all your sovereignty over everything. Whether it be the people who seek the world and its possessions or the people who seek you, God, with their whole heart. In your son's name I pray. Amen.